Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to day 12 of unboxing 30 parcels in 30 days, which is no longer what I'm going to be calling this series because as some of you may have noticed, I've not exactly stuck to the whole 30 day thing. So we're, we're just daily vlogging now to the best of my ability. And today I'm heading out to 10 Lives, the cat themed op shop in North Hobart. I get the best donations. It's, it must be because people love cats, they love animals, but people take such nice things to 10 Lives. So um, I haven't been to the 10 Lives in North Hobart in ages. I really like the one in Margate. The one in Margate has so much beautiful vintage clothing and they always have an incredible dress section. Uh, the one here in North Hobart is pretty big. They've got a really large clothing section and I've always had really good luck with shoes. But for anyone that's been tuning in daily, you'll know that I'm on the hunt for a vintage coach bag. I've been trying to find one for days now. We are yet to manifest it, but a coach handbag or juicy couture jeans or Victoria's Secret clothing of some sort, they're the three things at the top of my wish list. I will gladly accept a pair of Prada boots or something if I can come across them because I swear every time I watch TikToks of people thrifting in America, they come across vintage Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, Dior, Prada, Louis Vuitton. They're finding it everywhere. Um, the other thing that I always see popping up on TikTok that people in America seem to successfully be able to thrift that I can't for the life of me thrift here is the brand BB. Does anyone know the brand BB? It's spelled B-E-B-E. -E. I don't know if you'd say Bebe or BB. That retro, not that vintage brand from the early 2000s, I look for it everywhere. I know it exists here. I know it does, but I can never find it. But every time I see a come thrift with me on TikTok, someone's like, the first thing that I found when I walked into the store was this vintage BB shirt. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> how do I find that? So yeah, manifesting a coach bag. Uh, also, I would really, really love to find a pointed toe pair of boots uh, that's got like some studs on them. You know, in the similar style to Balenciaga, I would love to find that. Now, big problem for me that I'm having today is that every road in Hobart is closed. I have been trying to get to this shop for 45 minutes. It should have taken me 10. It should have taken me 10 minutes to drive into town and to drive through and get to this place. I go to take a left. Oh no, the road's closed. There's a car show. That's fine. I'll go 500 meters up the road and take a left. Oh no, that road's closed. There's a parade happening. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll take the next left. Oh, that road's closed. There's roadworks. I don't even know what's going on here. Look at this. We've got side road closed and for, for literally no reason, there's a van pulled across there. I don't know what's happening down that road. It's, oh, it's a parade. Of course, it's another parade. Oh, it must be the same parade. I think that it's the same parade the whole way along because the, the parade I saw before was going that way, but I just looked down and that one was going that way. So I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't turn left here because I'm going to encounter the parade again. Oh, I don't know what to do! Yay, I made it! Now I just have to hope I can find a parking spot, which I can't. There's, there's nowhere to park. Alright, I'll uh, try around here. Okay, I found a spot five minutes down the road. But that's fine, that's fine. Before I get out of the car, let's open today's parcel. Just in case there's something I can wear. It's a piece of clothing. It's a... Oh! Oh, cute! It's a little uh, lace-up corset kind of thing. See, lace-up at the back, off the shoulder, Hopefully that fits me. It's by the brand Crossroads. Oh, it's an extra small. I don't have high hopes at all for this. I'll have to try this on when I get home. But uh, all right, I'll see you in 10 lives. Started off strong with some teeny, teeny, tiny little teacups. They are pigeon sized. I'm always tempted to buy tiny little crockery for my pigeons. Uh, this, though, they would probably mistake for seed, so 
best to leave that behind. Now there's this retro rack as soon as you walk in the door and I was really excited because the first thing that I picked up was this $6 beautiful retro vintage dress. I left it behind, I don't need it, but then look, some wonderful retro vintage Fashion Nova. Yay! Hello. Hi. Aren't you beautiful? You're so cute. What's your name? Hecky. <laughs> Two-year-old female. Hecky is a gorgeous girl who loves to play and interact with her people. She's very chatty and smoochy and loving her quest to touch with her sweet meows. Hecky has shown a dislike for other cats and didn't get along with all the dogs in her previous home. She has an asymptomatic heart murmur. An ultrasound showed she has a condition called hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Most likely congenital condition, i.e. she was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. The condition is currently asymptomatic and Hecky does not currently require any treatment. Aren't you beautiful? You're so beautiful. So a few days ago, I unboxed a Alana Hill cardigan in one of my parcels, and I found another one here. I thought this was beautiful, but it cost a little bit too much. I really liked this dress. I've been seeing a lot of cute little summery dresses with long sleeves that I like. Didn't get it, left it there. Obviously had to check out the handbag section, and there was that fake Dolce & Gabbana one up there, but didn't like any of the bags. I liked these purple shoes, though. Kind of. For five bucks, I mean, that, that's pretty good. This forever new skirt was really pretty. I really, really liked the embroidery and the color was beautiful as well. I didn't get it because it wasn't really the type of skirt that I'm going for. I do like this length, but I prefer them to be a little bit more flowy. I see a lot of Princess Polly donated these days. I see it in almost every single thrift shop I go to. This was a nice long skirt and it was really cheap too. Another Alana Hill cardigan, again, I think this is the same price as the other one. I think they were both $15. Both the pink one and this one had beautiful, beautiful sparkly buttons. It had a really, really nice little cinched in waist and beautiful long sleeves. I really wanted it, left it there. This was, mm, I liked the hem, that, that was it. I liked the colors of this, but left that. And then... And then I finally, I can't believe I found this. I've been looking for Firuchi for ages. I tried it on and it, it's basic, but I don't care. I'm basic too. Uh, I wanted to look like Big Bird in green, you know, straight out of Sesame Street. <laughs> um, this was interesting. I, I kept sort of turning and posing and being like, come on, like it, but I didn't. I, okay, this. See, this is what I mean by skirts. The Forever New one was a pencil skirt. I prefer long, flowy skirts. This was really lovely. Color scheme, great. I don't know what it was made of. It didn't have a brand. It didn't say if it was silk or what. I liked it. Not enough to get it, though. I spotted this top by Witchery, and it was only $5, and wow, I didn't expect to like this as much as I did, but it might have been something to do with the fact that it was paired with these big baggy cargo jeans or something. I don't know. I really, really liked this. Witchery is a nice Australian brand. They're normally pretty expensive too. This probably would have been $80 or so when it was new. These pants, I had high hopes. I love big bohemian pants, but I I kind of, I, I don't know. I look like a cabbage. <laughs> So I hit up the book section in the hopes of finding some early 2000s magazines like Girlfriend, Dolly, Cosmopolitan, Clio or Vogue, something like that. But there was uh, kitchen magazines, living magazines, outdoor, Belle, which is, you know, lifestyle, weddings, more weddings. Uh, not for me. No, thank you. Never again. <laughs> So uh, nothing there. I'm looking everywhere I go, though. I was kind of tempted to get this, but it was from 2015. If that had been early 2000s, I would have been interested. So I headed across to Vinnie's, which is just a couple of doors down. And uh, these guys are normally pretty pricey. Definitely compared to 10 lives, it's a lot more expensive here. Walked in, and the very first thing that I spotted was this Miss Anne dress. This is early 2000s, but for the price, I was like, ugh definitely not. It's really cute. You can just imagine wearing this to, I don't know, like year 10 formal or something. Just some cute 
insanely high stilettos that you probably shouldn't have been wearing when you were 16 and it's perfect. Again, $15 for Joseph Ripkoff. I've got Joseph Ripkoff dresses from other stores for $5. And remember, I got something really similar for $3.50 recently. I did really like this though, because it had those interesting butterflies at the top. I, I really wasn't sure. I kind of toyed around with it a little bit and I was like, maybe, maybe not. So I just carried it around with me the whole time that I was in the store. I spotted this. I really wanted this. I love fluffy collared cardigans and it was really nice and long and it had beautiful long sleeves. But again, the price just turned me off. I decided not to. I spotted this, uh, what I think is probably a guest bag, really, really big guest bag. $10 is pretty good for that, but it was missing its buckle at the top. It probably would have had a big G on it. These Black Friday pants were so cool. Not my style. I don't really wear things like this, but someone's going to go there and love them if you're a size eight. Now this bag, this was really interesting to me, had this cool buckle detail, but it had butterflies all over it. And I've been super into the butterflies lately and it was only $4, four bucks. In my head, I was like, look, you can't go wrong for $4. I had a look for the brand Miss M. Don't know this brand. I spotted a Jane Shilton bag. Jane Shilton, beautiful vintage uh, leather handbags. No coach bags though. Here I am trying on the butterfly bag and really willing myself to like it. I was like, come on, it's four bucks. You can't go wrong, Alex. It's four bucks and it's got butterflies on it. But the longer I held it there and stared at it, I was like, uh... I decided not to. So I tried this on over the top of my top. I really, I couldn't be bothered waiting for the people to come out of the change room. There were too many people. And I was like, I'm not going to wait. Tried it on over my top. And yes, the butterflies are nice, but it just was giving me nothing. Forgive me for being out of breath. It's really hot and I parked quite away from the shop. So didn't get anything at Vinnie's. But from Just Cats, I did get the little halter neck top because I really liked how this looked with the jeans, the big baggy jeans. And, sorry, the Fiorucci top. So I suppose you're probably wondering why I was making such a big deal out of this. This brand, iconic, iconic vintage brand. I have been looking for pieces from Fiorucci for so long, like years, every time I go thrifting. Look, look at this. And also it is 50% wool, 50% acrylic. So it's a little wool sweater. I know it's a basic thing, but it is the beginning of my Fiorucci collection. You can buy it online if you look hard enough on Depop and eBay, etc. except it's always really, really expensive. So for $6, bargain. Now I'm going to head off to the South Hobart tip shop and I'm also going to see a friend for lunch at a cafe called Bear With Me, which is so good. It's such a nice little cafe. They make really interesting quirky food. So I'll see you guys there. Holy shit. Oh my God. I don't know what this is. There's a market happening here and it's full of clothing. I, I am taking a slight detour. Oh my God. The entire market is all clothing. What on earth? Um, find of the day. <laughs> so I wandered on in and was immediately struck by overwhelming social anxiety. There were way too many people here for me. Uh, too many people, not enough chickens, wow, not enough pigeons. I really what? wanted to be the sort this of person wild. that could just rock up to a flea market and, you know, casually stroll around in the sun. But uh, uh, I was literally like, don't make eye contact with anyone i don't know i'm so bad out in public i just i'm useless so i'm just gonna ramble on i'm just gonna do this little voiceover for you and we can have a look at the things that i spotted together the prices here it was a little bit hard because some people had prices marked some people didn't you would like pick up a piece of clothing and take it to the person sitting at the stall and they would just kind of make up a price on the spot and it felt a little bit awkward for me but what I did find fun about a market like this is that every stall obviously reflects the person that is selling their pieces. Unless it's someone that's, you know, just collecting stuff purely to sell at markets. Some of these places, like this stall that I'm looking at right now, this was three girls running this stall. They're all friends. And the girl that 
collected the Sugar Thrills pieces. She definitely shared a very, very similar style to me and her prices were amazing. A lot of this stuff was $5. This adorable little skirt, five bucks. Vintage, made in Australia. I was finding so many good things here. Like I said, there was a lot of Sugar Thrills. There was also I Am Gia as well. There was no fast fashion kind of stuff in this store. I didn't see anything from Shein or Target, Kmart. Uh, there was a lot of that sort of stuff in other stalls, but here, a lot of it, like this thing that I'm struggling with right now, and when I say I'm struggling, I'm like, I'm really struggling. <laughs> um, this, there was a lot that was like silk or, you know, vintage pieces, labeled you know nice it's i'm not saying that some of it wasn't fast fashion like dolls kill is definitely fast fashion this is a little sugar thrills shirt here um but i mean like the ultra fast fashion there was no ultra fast fashion pieces here but uh yeah ten dollars for a sugar thrills shirt she also had an adorable dog and she was encouraging everyone to interact with him i thought this was really cute a little betty boop nightgown i was really tempted to get this i know that there's this trend of wearing like nightwear as daywear these days. Uh, this little top here as well, I was kind of tempted by that too. Then over here, this, $5. $5 for a Dangerfield turtleneck. Uh, it was a size four, so I wasn't certain whether I should get it, but I spotted the flare on these jeans and I fell in love. Then uh, they also had, oh, this was a syndicate skirt. Normally I collect syndicate pieces, but $15 was too much. This store over here had a lot of really nice retro rockabilly styles. And this caught my eye. I'm an OG Land Before Time fan, little foot for life. I, I had a pet bird called Ducky, but this was $65, so I decided to pass. I'm always attracted to sparkly things, but that was priced too high for me. This was beautiful, this beautiful prairie dress. I was actually, I was too scared to ask the price for that, so I didn't. Um, ah yes, we, we love the fake Louis, we stand. Uh, yeah, this store here, this was really interesting. This lady was getting rid of her entire wardrobe. She was giving away some pieces for free. That was free. I, I didn't take it, I left it for someone else, but um, I got in a conversation with her. She was really interesting. She definitely would have shared a very similar style to what I like now. So she was in her 40s and a lot of these clothes were from when she was growing up. So she had things from like the 80s, she had things from 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Hang on, maybe she was in her 50s actually, come to think of it. I really loved this dress and I ummed and ahed over this for a while. Um, this is actually the reason that I got into the conversation with the lady because I took it over to her mirror to sort of hold it up against myself and she was like, uh, I wore that I can't remember what she said she she was 17 or something when she wore that so all in all it was a pretty fun market and i did kind of get over my social anxiety toward the end but uh i picked up a few pieces that was immensely stressful i i think i prefer shopping in vinnies in in thrift shops to going to a clothing market because like the people that the person that you're buying the stuff off the person that the money is going directly to is sitting in the chair looking at you it's not like you know you just go up to a, a counter and there's a volunteer or something like it's, it's personal so the first thing that i saw was this little slip dress which i thought was so pretty and you know i'm everything else in her shop was like five dollars ten dollars and this didn't have a brand on it and that's something that i noticed everywhere in there the the, the brands were cut off which was a little bit sketch to me because I was like, is this Shein? This could be Anko, this could be like Kmart or Target or Shein. And the only indication that you have is the fabric and the make. And I'm getting pretty good at realizing and, and you know, differentiating between cheap things, things that are well made. But there are a few things like this that kind of stumped me. And I was like, this is really nicely made, but there's no brand. This could very well be Shein for all I know. And it didn't have a price on it and like i took it up to the girl and it was her and her friend sitting at the stall and i was like hi just this one please and the person in front of me paid five dollars for her thing and she was like i'd like 40 for it please and i was like okay and before i even thought i was like okay and i, I like handed her a note and then i was like oh my god i've just paid 40 dollars for this dress <laughs> um so i really hope it fits me anyway she said to me apparently it's from urban outfitters I don't know if that's true or not because there's no tags on it anywhere 
but Urban Outfitters apparently. So I paid $40 for that. So that was definitely um, off to a, a bad start. So then the next stall that I went to, um, the girl was selling heaps of Sugar Thrills and Dolls Kill and her prices were so good. I got this little vintage Australian skirt. This is by um, Destiny Jeans Co, made in Australia. I got this for $5. So that was great. That made me feel so much better because now in my head, I paid $10 for the pink skirt and I only paid $35 for the other dress. Or I, I, I only paid $30 for the other dress. And then this, this little Sugar Thrills dress, got that for $10. So if I, if I pretend that I got that for $15, now the price of the black dress comes down to $25 in my head. Girl maths, right? And also, I got this for $5. And this is silk. This is vintage, made in Australia. A little bustier, $5. So if I pretend that I got this for $10, which it's totally worth, now the little black slip dress is like $15, right? Girl maths. Girl maths, girl maths. I got this Dangerfield, car, um, what do you call this? The, the neck that looks like the turtle, the turtle neck. I got this for five and then I got these jeans for 20. I really hope these fit me because these have the most beautiful big flare on them. They're stunning and they're really, really long too. Um, in my head, I paid $10 for the Dangerfield top and $15 for the jeans um, <laughs> instead of 20. And then I paid $10 for this vintage block out skirt. And the lady told me that she actually bought this in Sydney in the early 2000s. She was like, I've had that skirt for 20 years, <laughs> got it in Sydney from Blockout. And I was like, the Blockout at Castle Towers? And she was like, yes. And I'm like, bought plenty of things there in my day. Not really, not really plenty of things because it was too expensive. I think I bought two things from there in my entire life. But you know what? I went in there every single weekend with my friend, <laughs> all the time. Anyway, now I'm off for some lunch and then off to the tip shop. But I'll save the tip shop video for another day because I think that I've got more than enough footage for today. So I'll catch you guys at the cafe. So if you're in Tasmania and you're looking for a place to eat, Bear With Me is incredible. I ordered the Dan Dan noodles and my friend got the Korean fried chicken burger. Here were my noodles and they were, <laughs> I can't even begin to describe how good. And I also had a bite of this burger and it was devastatingly delicious. And the chips were great too. Holy this is one of the best chips I've had in Tasmania. So good. My day has been made. No, my, my year has been made. This is amazing. Hello, puppy. Is that your house? Hello. Are you guarding your house? Good guarding. You're so cute. Hi ho, hi ho. Off to the tip shop I go. I'm back at it again and I'm here for, you guessed it, magazines we're looking for vogue we're looking for dolly we're looking for girlfriend but what we've got instead is national geographic <laughs> which is fine it's fine uh crochet geo nope uh we've got oh cycling yeah wonderful <laughs> just what i need why are there so many cycling magazines in these places <laughs> why do people throw out there's cycling magazines, there's sailing magazines, racing magazines, patchwork magazines. Okay, yep, more sailing, yachting. Then I thought I struck gold because I saw fashion on the front, but it was just a bunch of patterns. Um, Minecraft, cool. Uh, I thought that said cosmopolitan and I was like, yay, but no, no. Royal magazines. Where, where on earth would you find a collection of royal family magazines? <laughs> um, I did find something that was interesting. Fashion from 2000 and 2001. And uh, it, it all ended up being like runway fashion from Japan. It, it, it was written in Japanese at the bottom of every page and it was all designer catwalk stuff. So, I mean, pretty cool. It, it's, it's cool to see a fashion magazine from Japan from the year 2000, but uh, I... I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. So I just had to flick through it to show you guys some of the brands, like Kenshi, Com, Com de Carson. That's kind of cool. Uh, does anyone recognize any of these names at the top here? I, I only recognized uh, Com de Garçon. I, do, I didn't spot Isimiyaki. Or, I think they're all Japanese designers. So, I mean, maybe I should have bought it. But uh, anyway, ended my day by grabbing some Biltong 
in Margate and then I'm wrapping up my day here in snug uh, down by the water I've got my camera I'm gonna take photos of some birds but I figured for anyone that's still watching I'd like to set a little bit of a challenge oh wait hang on that's that's a special bird hang on look at him do you see him oyster catcher you yes stay right there look at this distinguished gentleman look at how he's sitting yeah so i was thinking if uh, you guys want to give me a little bit of a challenge leave a comment below and tell me an outfit that you'd like me to thrift put put like a i don't know a top bottoms bag shoes or like a particular style though say hey alex i'd like you to find a black skirt and a white cardigan and a pair of leather boots and a pink handbag or or something and like get really specific if you can and if you want to include brands uh, you could say like oh i want to see you put together a look from like i don't know urban outfitters or that's probably a bit too specific i don't know if i'd be able to find exactly that but you know what i mean um i'll pick a couple of comments and then over the next few days when i'm thrifting i'm going to try to piece together the looks that you guys have suggested i think that'd be really cute so uh yeah anyway i'm gonna waste away my afternoon photographing birds so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you tomorrow